What's up everybody, Dylan here from Iceberg TV. There's a few things that went into the making of this video. I just played in a skins match and I saw Alex here throw a buzz right around or just over 400 feet and nail a really difficult par three. I kind of bit my tongue for a second, but I was very impressed. Yeah, that was a T-bird, but thank you. Either way, it was very impressive, 400 <laughs> foot T-bird. So I bit my tongue, I was impressed and after the round, I talked to Alex a little bit and we kind of discussed my technique because I was a little bit jealous of the distance he was getting. And based on what he saw, you felt like I may not be getting a proper weight transfer into my plant foot. Yeah. So what I saw was it's not so much the weight transfer is more the balance transfer. Like you can tell in your follow through, it's leading a little bit on the back foot. So therefore your weight's not fully shifted forward into the shot. And that's just slightly one thing I saw. It's kind of like a pendulum. You start left and then you finish right. See how all my weight's on the right foot? Yeah. And then you just do this. And that's why it kind of looks like I'm falling into my shot. Right. And when I see Alex throw, it's very noticeable. He has a delayed amount of time where he's deliberately on his left foot. And then he falls onto the right foot with this very good plant and I mean, the distance was really impressive and I was definitely thinking that's not something that I'm doing. So conveniently, he is a disc golf coach in the Charlotte area. If you do live in the area, you should check this guy out for coaching. Yep. But today I'm going to be selfish. We're going to work on my weight transfer, my backhand stuff and see if we can't improve some of my weight transfer, balance transfer. Um, so he noticed a couple things. So hopefully we can work that out. Do you want to throw a couple shots just to kind of show what you're talking about and then i'll throw one or two and then we see if we can fix it yeah for sure i'll throw one or two shots and then i'll i'll have you throw four and the reason i have you throw four is i look at your footwork waist shoulders and then follow through and, and then after that i can kind of deduct what you need to work on that sounds good and the reason why i want you guys to see his throw is he's so deliberate with the weight transfer, I think his throw is a really good example of what you should do when it comes to that transfer. So I just want to see that. I mean, it's just so deliberate. It's really noticeable. And that's kind of what I'm going to be working on today. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to start a sort of start from the back left corner and finish in the center of the tee pad. I'm always going to line my run up straight with the gap that I want to hit. See, and that's absolutely crushed. First throw of the day. Very, very effortless looking. You want to do that just one more time? Yes, sir. So deliberate. That one came out more nose down. You can see how it turned over a little bit. Yeah, that looked great. So now I'm going to throw a couple. Do you want yep. me to try and emulate your throw or do you want me to just do what do, I normally do your normal shot and then I'll start uh, changing stuff. Okay. Yeah, keep throw throw all four and then I'll go through and say stuff afterwards. Okay. That was good hip movement. I didn't see anything wrong there. So footwork hip works good. And my form's not bad, but I feel like in a way I can't access my athleticism. Like you've seen me throw forehands. I can throw well over 400 forehand, mm -hmm. which I feel like means I'm relatively athletic. Yeah. When I throw backhand, I feel like I'm not accessing my power. Right. Which I think is why I need to work on exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Well, throw. And also forehand, it's kind of hard to like incorporate a bounce into your shot. So that's why most people just, I guess, use more of a cockback position to create more snap instead of yeah you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. whereas backhand is kind of you need to generate you can be a little bouncy exactly right you ever what you what you see me throw before like a really big shot i'm just sitting there before my shot and then I'm, <laughs> that makes know, total sense it's like I, generating potential energy almost which exactly i'm creating a bounce and then my bounce is transitioned through my my steps right all right i'm gonna throw one or two more here okay All right, I'll grab one more disc here. Okay. Throw my favorite time lapse. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a time lapse. Yeah, she's a flip dog. Yeah, I like that. Flip that dog time nice. lapse. So the last shot actually looked the best out of all of them, in my opinion, because of this part right here. Whenever you followed through, you were really over on top of it. Whereas the other ones, you were going for hyzer and you kept your weight back. I wasn't trying to go for hyzer for also. Okay. I should note that. I was not trying to hyzer there. It was just happening okay, against my cool. will. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hyzer just did it to me, man. Yeah, the hyzer hit me good there. Um, I would say two things we want to start working on is really getting this weight back and then forward. And then also incorporate that bounce. You know what I'm saying? Get it to where you can get your waist from a low position to higher. Because right now you're keeping your waist very level throughout your run up. Mm -hmm. And if your waist is level, that means your weight, your weight is level. You want to be able to get your weight up and down. Right, because you want to have that foot moving in a downward motion exactly. and not an out and across. You want to be at, like moving down into your plant. A exactly. Bit. Imagine a spring. Whenever you take a spring that's like a like a like a car spring and you push it together, what does it do? I mean, it's just it, it uncoils. Tension. It yeah. uncoils as hard as it can, right? But right. the the concept of doing this, like breaking and making yourself bigger and then going smaller, is okay. what I'm explaining. So it's kind of like a very tall small tall small you see what i'm saying so i'm gonna try and incorporate that little like a little crow hop and i used to do that mm -hmm. but i didn't see the benefit in it so i stopped doing it but i think now that i've got i'm tr i'm deliberately trying to be level and i think that's costing me distance exactly it gives you consistency but it costs you distance all right let's now, grab let's grab a few more and i'm gonna try your the crow hop okay okay let's see if you think these look any better here is there anything else that i should be thinking about aside i'll, I'll try and feel bouncy get up on your toe on on your left foot on left that second yet yeah, see how you did that right there that's exactly how it, but you don't want to push up you want to be up already and you catch yourself so it's kind of like see see my foot how it's cut watch my foot it's going to catch like that okay so I'll i'm try. already in that position i'm not going yeah okay okay yeah, yeah. so when i'm x-stepping it's already tall exactly okay you kind of right. just want to start on your tippy toe and that'll put your waist up about what three or four inches and then that's that'll give you more weight to sling into the shot all right so i'm gonna try and think boom like more like that oh i fell off the t-pad let me try another i fell off the pad <laughs> Bravo, bravo. That felt kind of smashed. It got to the trees a lot quicker than that other one did. Yeah, like twice as fast, honestly. What's the speed of this disc compared to that other disc, though, that you threw? The same-ish. Okay. They're both drivers. Okay. All right. Really think about whenever... So you got the second step, right, where you're on your toe on that first step to get into that position, really think about bending this knee to push yourself up. Like a little. Yeah, you're kind of doing a jump. It's okay. kind of like bend down, jump up, hold, and then smash. Okay, bend down, jump up, hold, smash. Bend down, jump up, hold, smash. It's kind of like a... Hopefully I don't trip again. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh, I'm yes. falling off the pad again, but I, I didn't. I love that though. You did exactly what I was asking you. Now we just got to control it. Yeah, let me try a few more. I keep falling off the pad because I'm like gaining more distance. Like uh, I'm moving more distance in the walk up. Right. All right. None Generating of these... probably more momentum. Yeah, more momentum than I'm used to, which is probably a good thing. All these discs are slower, so they may not look as cool. I think your your extension was a little late on that last one. All the other ones have been perfect, but that one you kind of came out just slightly late. You came down right as your arm was coming out like that. And I should wait longer. So yeah, so, I did it early. You said yeah. So like no, you did it late. So like did it late. So imagine me holding it here, and it's all the way back here the whole time. Okay. You did this. You went, and okay. you threw it back there, right? You, and whenever you do that you're throwing weight back to put the extension back there. And all that weight is lost now whenever you go to swing through. 
So, okay. so your goal is to Ezra Adderhold has a good video about this where he places it and you try to keep that in the same exact position. So get this disc times. back a little earlier. Exactly. Okay. And then you add that with the pro hop. Okay. So I'm going to think it creates I'm, a crazy coil. So I'm going to do all the things that I'm trying to do, but I'm also going to try and keep this guy here or back. Exactly. The only two okay. things you should be worried about with your footwork is the first step bounce, second step toe, and then hold it in position. The rest Those of it kind of happens naturally. Exactly. Those are the only three things you should really be thinking about. All right. About. Bounce, toe, 500 foot smash. Yes, sir. Okay. That felt like I got on top of it, kind of. Something wasn't right. If that's there. a more stable disc, though, then it was it'll smashed. be able to hold. It wasn't necessarily a bad shot. It just wasn't a stable enough disc for it. Wasn't the right disc. Yeah. So I want to tell you something about distance. What you're doing now is you're pushing past a, a tier. So like nose angle, if you keep your nose up slightly, you're going to hit tier two in the flight, which is like 400 feet and start fading. Right. Whereas if you keep it more nose down, the flight plate we're aiming isn't this one. We're aiming this flight plate. So this is techni technically flat on the ground, right? Because this flight, flight plate is flat on the ground. Right, right, it's right. It's kind of like we need to do that. Okay. It's going to look weird, but it pushes past all those extra tiers and gives you more distance okay. without technically having to force it. Yeah, that makes sense. It's uh... something that I figured out about 2020. I spent four months playing disc golf without work <laughs> and I just figured stuff out and that was one of them. All right. I'm still just, I'm not going to fully think about that yet Okay. because I'm trying to work on yeah. so many things at once. Should I start like a touch more? Like I shouldn't even start like this. I should probably just start like kind of where I've already want to be, right? Like sideways a bit. Um, whatever's comfortable for you. I would say just try to get the disc into position quicker sooner before you do your hop. I would say have it in position. Okay. That way it kind of extends your body and sling off that. There you go. That that disc is really, really stable for me and it went pretty much dead straight. That thing's a meat hook. That's the Saint Pro. That looked really good and smooth. Did you kind of feel any difference? Yeah, no, it felt it felt explosive. It Sweet. felt good. I kind of like what you did. You held it back and then you straightened your arm. That's perfect. That's good. Yeah. This thing's flippy, so it's gonna flip. But we're not gonna worry about that. All right. I need to like deliberately have it like overcorrect to here during my run up for that whatever just happened. To right, happen. exactly. So I'm like almost pulling my shoulder <laughs> yeah. over. Yeah, you're starting that process of opening up that up your hips and everything by doing that. Right. So that way it starts the open process quicker. Little headwind. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was gonna flip. It's getting there fast though. Yeah. You got something more stable. Yeah. You have these stack of T-Birds that I'm about to steal. Can yeah. I throw this? Yeah, I think they're all pretty stable too. If I hit the tree, this might break. It's all leaky. <laughs> I love these T-Birds. It's like 2010 probably. <laughs> it's so old. All right. All right, come on. That felt good. Yeah. That it felt really good. It kind of faded like 50 feet earlier than mine. And I think our hinges, here, let me see, how long are your, how long is your wingspan? Yeah, dude, we've almost got the same exact build. Yeah, similar proportions. Mm -hmm. So your timing would make sense for me, mostly because we have similar proportions. Mm -hmm. And you've worked on a lot more than I have, so you figured more things out than I have. So Right, and my weight transfer possibly could just be a little bit smoother than yours. Oh, my, for my, sure. <laughs> my, my last few steps are a little bit slower than yours. So that's why I'm able to kind of pinpoint nose angles a little bit easier and push distances better. I'm going to try and slow it down on this one. Okay. I'm going to try and spend a little more time on my toe. Yeah, exactly. Kind of kind of fill the weight all on your toe right. back here and then think about falling forward onto that right foot. Okay. I need to start a little more back. I'm getting so much more run up. That really felt... That felt way snappier. I mean, did you hear your shoe? Yeah. Freaking... Your shoe on the ground made a crazy noise. Just about blew out my <laughs> shoe. That's fire. I'm going to throw a couple more T-Birds here. All right. I got some bosses if you need them. I want to feel big. All right. Was that a little more time on the toe? Was that noticeable? That was noticeable. It, it was probably like an extra half second. 
yeah, it felt, awesome. it felt like a decade to me. Like it felt like I was on my toe forever. <laughs> oh yeah. That's the one. Beat it. Oh, <laughs> I wish I did that with the exploding T-bird. That would've been cool. You want me to show you something I'm going to start working on next year? Yes. I'm going to try to work on, and I don't even know if this will work guys. So forgive me if I'm doing something blasphemous in the disc golf world, but I'm going to try to create a large hop. So like, you know how you're just going up and down like this, like I normally do. Yeah. I'm going to actually try to give myself like a 20 inch vertical. Well, that's what James does. Conrad. Then, yeah. He yeah. But dude, like his, how high does he jump though? Like what's his vertical whenever he does it? Do you... Oh dude, he's so long and skinny. It's probably high. <laughs> he's but, and he's tall. Yeah. But like he throws it a country mile. So I'm going to try to incorporate that. Just keep that focused. Oh, dude. That's a really stable disc. Holy cow. Something. <laughs> you know, you know, you do that and we laugh, but I also, I'm a big believer in overcorrection. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who's like flat and stagnant and doesn't have any of this, that would be a good way to correct that as long as you're not going to hurt yourself trying. Right. I'm going to try that and it's going to look terrible, but I'm going to do it anyway because <laughs> I, I do believe in overcorrecting. I'm going to go for the big jump. Oh boy. That felt fast. The mm -hmm. release was trash, but it felt fast. Did that look faster? Yeah. Okay. You, you got a driver in there? Boss. Most overstable disc in my bag. All right. I'm going to really try, try to give it some Annie. Yeah. I'm going to try and get it more nose down. Yeah. Annie's a lot easier okay. to throw off of this bounce than any other shot. Okay. Because if you think about it, whenever you hop, if I'm already in this position, my weight's already dragging into the line. Oh, right. I'm like attacking Egg. on top of the disc exactly. with this kind of momentum. It's totally, exactly. totally a different feel for me. All right. Try and think of everything at once. <laughs> All 89 things. Oh, I mean, that was really powerful, but the release was bad. I mean, look how straight that thing just went. Dude, that's a meat hook. Not when I threw it just then. That was Dude, good. It's a legit meat hook, though. All right. Let's do one more throw and then we'll reel it in and see if there's anything else that we I should be working on. I already think I have some improvement though. Yeah. I already feel like- It's looking like that weight transfer is just popping now. It almost looks like I throw. It almost looks like my throw. And I'm a big coaching cue guy. If you give me a cue that I can mentally go to, I may not be thinking about shifting my weight, but if adding the crow hop back to my throw gets me there, I don't care if I need to think about weight transfer or not. If it's happening by thinking of that, that's way better for me. Exactly. Because that's something that, and I, I know a lot of you guys are like this too. That's something I can always return to. If I feel like I'm not doing well, I can think about Dylan, just go to the crow hop that usually fixes this and, and it will usually fix it. So it's good to have a cue that you can always go back to. That's kind of easy for you to think about. All right. I do want to keep this disc back though. Yeah. That, I think that is the most awkward thing for me. Uh, it's probably going to give you more snap than anything else, too. Why, well, like In terms that. of spin. I mean, that's that's kind of smoked. Yeah. I like that. So is there anything else that you see? Do you feel like the transfer is going better than it was when we started? I think so. What about, how do you feel about it? Man, I'd love to hit a tech disc, but I, I really mm -hmm. do truly feel like particularly that gold line uh, St. Pro I threw, that thing is ridiculously overstable for me, like sh like swinging right away. And it just penetrated forward through like 90% of the flight, which yeah. is something I've never seen that disc do before. So the concept behind it is if I, if I have my muscle memory dial this swing in from 90 degrees, right? If this is my breaking point, mm -hmm. if I dial this in from like 200 feet, then this is going to be perfect every time because my body's going to revert back to this point every single shot. Right. So as long as I'm training that muscle, I can I can extend back as long as I want, right? But for me, this right here is 150, 300, 350, and then I'll get back here for like longer extensions. And that's kind of how I can gauge my distance. So the farther you wanna throw, the more you're leaning over the back leg. Exactly. Like, I'm not getting here at all. Right. But, but you it's feel like also if I... adding length to that extension, which also translates into the weight. And everything. So if I'm on my tippy toe and I'm here and I plant, I'm going to go throw a lot farther than if I was like probably what I was doing. I was not getting that much reach back. Right. 
And I guess the more that you lean back, the further you can reach back. You can't you can't reach back that far if I'm on this and see how far. But let like me try here, let me try to throw two with the super reach back. Can I get uh, you got some more drivers in here? Yeah, you can throw the meat. This one right here. Show that to the camera. Meat. I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> the meat is is a stable disc. Is that is that true? It's kind of straight. <laughs> kind of straight. <laughs> she can be stable sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna deliberately try super reach back. Think about the lean back too. To get right, right. Back. Really gonna lean back. Lean back. Oh, that felt. Like an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so if you add those three things together, it's going to feel like an explosion. That, went, that was... Why am I yanking them to the right? Because I now that I'm doing that, I used to... I was throwing, I feel like, straight, and now I'm like... You have to adjust your timing now because you're getting a faster rotation with your body. So what that means is your body is going from this position to this position faster. much quicker. Let me, so try, you, let me try one more. So you got to figure out, always think about whenever you hit here, once you, once you hit this spot, <clears throat> then rotate. You see how I'm breaking it right here? So that way I'm always at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Boom. Just always think once you hit 90, like I was telling you with the muscle memory, once you hit 90 on your elbow, you break it. Okay. Let me try. I'm going to try one more super reach back and try and throw it straight at that gap. There you go. Dude, that that was probably my fastest one. That felt really good. That's my baby, too. That's my Jen Allen Ray. I know. He was throwing the heck out of that during the skins match we just yeah. played. So I knew I, I wanted to throw it at least once. That's my baby girl. So I feel like I have some pretty consistent things that I can work on. I do feel like we've added a good bit of speed in a very short period of time. Um, for the people watching the video, is there anything else that they should be focusing on when it comes to transferring their weight? Like, let's say they're not athletic enough to do a full crow hop. What? Because I think there's a lot of disc golfers that maybe are new to the sport. They're not They're not ready to be that explosive. Mm -hmm. What can somebody do, maybe perhaps who's throwing standstills? Um, there's one thing that I like to tell my students to try is, here, I'm going to act like you're a wall. Okay, so stand still like this. Here, like this, so that way they can see. Okay. All right, so this is a door frame right here. I can walk through it, say you're in your house. You go up to the door frame. It's gonna, I'm not going to hit you, I promise. Okay. You, you put your foot about three to four inches away from that frame. And then you, you swing through. What this trains is it trains you to get the disc close to your body. And it helps train this angle right here. So the closer you can get to your body, see how it goes from 90 degrees to more of like 110 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you more snap too. So that's for more of the people that need to work on getting it closer to their body to create okay. more snap. Okay, I, I feel like that's a good tip. And if, and if you mess up, you're going to hit the wall. Yeah, so you exactly. You probably won't mess up much more after that. But exactly. I mean, I feel like if you guys have any questions, you should leave them in the comment section down below. If there's anything that we didn't cover in this video, we can always do a follow-up video. Cool. But I don't think I even introduced your name, Alex Zyros. Hello. <laughs> He's now a member of Team Berg Sport. You can use code Alex15 over at the website to save 15%. He'll now be representing the Minty Green... Woo! berg sport so yeah if you guys have any questions about form posture technique comment below we can do a follow-up video on any of the questions you guys have he's a solid coach you've coached over 100 players you've done over 200 lessons yeah. and a uh, little bragging stat that i like to bring up sometimes um my first three people that i taught got their first days after their third lesson if you live in charlotte or any of the surrounding areas get a lesson with this guy it'll help improve your game i feel like i'm I got better. Actually, I think I'm going to go play a few holes and see if we can put this into action. I'm down. You got any other sponsors you want to shout out? Uh, I want to shout out some people that I forgot to shout out during the skins match. Uh, JM painting and remodeling. He's my buddy, Johnny Modenato. Hit him up if you guys need any type of work done around your house. Uh, team Chain Reactions up in what is it, Cornelius. Yeah, up in Cornelius area. <laughs> and um, I just don't know if it's like Statesville or Cornelius, but um, it's up in that up near the lake um down for disc golf up in concord they also help me out a lot so definitely go check them out they even got a tech disc if you want to go check your speed out um and team boom boom team focus you know thanks for being on the channel we'll see thanks you guys in the next video me. make sure you subscribe see ya
Adios. I think that went pretty good. Yeah, that was fun.